Hello and welcome to A Morning with Allie. This show covers love and romance topics with a metaphysical twist. Now, in case you don't know who I am, uh, well, obviously, A, I'm Allie, <laughs> but I'm also a certified professional sex coach, neurologist, and relationship expert, plus I'm a sixth generation intuitive. I'm the creator of Out of Body Ecstasy, which is a personal energy method using dreams, astral travel, or telepathy to enhance your sex life no matter if you're in a relationship or if you're flying solo. And also energy blending, the art of blending energy to give you the ideal relationship from the boardroom to the bedroom. Now besides this show, I also have um, the Ally Thieves show on Thursday nights on Block Talk from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And I have the Passion Zone, which is on Tuesday nights, also on Blog Talk from 6.30 to 7 o'clock p.m. To find out more about yours truly, please visit AllieThies.com. So how you doing? It's been a couple weeks since I've done this, and uh, I hope you've been doing well. Uh, myself, uh, you know, I got a little makeup on this time, so you know it's not uh, beaming with heat. And luckily, fall starts this weekend. Yay! My favorite time of the year. I'm very productive in the fall and in the winter. Uh, spring, not too bad. Summer, summer sucks <laughs> for me. Me and hot weather, we do not get along too well. Uh, so I don't know how, quite frankly, I'll move to California someday. But uh, I guess I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Uh, the Out of Body Ecstasy book, don't forget, is on Amazon.com. It's in the Kindle version right now. And the soft cover version will be coming out in October. The Daily Ohm, uh, Reclaiming Your Sexual Energy, is, well, the course on the Daily Ohm. And also uh, Bliss, if you want to get uh, inside information on OBE, energy blending, magic, love, relationships, soulmates, whatnot, um, get into the Bliss. Uh, you can find more out, out more about that at AllieThese.com. Now, in October, October 12th and 13th, I will be doing the Universal Life Expo, formerly known as the Universal Light Expo, in Columbus at Veterans Memorial. Um, I think it was called Veterans Memorial, it's not a stadium, Expo Complex, or just maybe Veterans Memorial. Anyways, it's a huge uh, New Age Expo. It's on every year, second weekend of October. And this year, I'm in booth 1114. And on Saturday night from 6.30, I think, I gotta look, no, 5.30, 5.30 to 6.20 in room 206 slash 207, I will be talking about your ideal sex life. Yes, imagine that, me talking about sex. But it'll be fun. Uh, if you're in the Columbus area, I hope you stop by and uh, say hi at my booth and also stop, maybe stop by the talk. Nothing I hate more than talking about sex uh, to nobody. <laughs> so I'm hoping somebody besides me shows up in that room. Okay, let us move on. The last time uh, you and I saw one another, the affirmation I gave you was, I am the pilot, co-pilot, and navigator of my life. So I hope you guys said that several times over and over again between then and now, because you really are the pilot, the co-pilot, and the navigator. Nobody steers your life. Nobody pilots your life but you. And by saying that affirmation over and over again, you in tune your subconscious and your conscious and your energy for you to realize that. And once that realization kicks in, you have that light bulb moment, then you are able to steer your life in the direction you want it to go. Okay? Uh, I will give you another affirmation at the end of uh, today's show. Now, this viewer's question, you can send me a question to amore at agelessknowledge.com. Uh, this is from NP, birthday 1189, and they write, Hey, Allie, uh, what I want to know is how can I develop my sixth sense? I know I have a sixth sense, and I think it's clairvoyance. I have indigo in my aura. I have deja vu very often. My mom has shown me that she can know what a person is thinking. I wouldn't say read, read minds, but she um, can't hear thoughts. Let me repeat that. I wouldn't say read minds because she can't hear thoughts. Okay. She just picks up what people are thinking, even though intuition, I suppose, is what she used. But how can I make my third eye stronger? Great exercise for you to use uh, besides using your intuition. Um, intuition, psychic sense, uh, whatever you would like to call it get stronger by use you know so in order to strengthen it you need to use it but a great energy exercise you can use to strengthen your uh, third eye chakra which for those of you who don't know is right in the middle of your forehead is you want to 
close your eyes and imagine a nice ball of light, indigo in color, just hovering above your third eye, just hanging out there, you know, saying hi, you know, catching the rays. And once you've got that really uh, fermented in your in your imagination, in your mind, you want to take that ball of energy and push it through your head and have it come out the back. Have it hover there for a few seconds, push it through the back and come through the front. And what you want to do is push that through, back and forth, through and through for uh, maybe two, three minutes, depending. Uh, some people get a really bad headache when they do it too often or too much in, what, in one setting, so it's going to be up to you once you start doing, doing it. But that energy ball going through your head um, gets rid of all the debris that's in there, the energy debris, um, the dust, uh, the, the rumbles of being human that might have covered up um, the pathways to your intuition, to your sixth sense, to your third eye chakra. So the energy ball helps considerably. Um, I've been using that technique for years when I feel kind of run down and like, Ugh, and I can't seem to tap in. I do that and it, it works um, almost immediately. It's more important to feel the energy ball going through your head as opposed to seeing the energy ball go through your head. So you want to concentrate more on the feeling of the energy going through as opposed to seeing the energy going through. I hope that makes sense. But once you are able to um, reawaken or strengthen your third eye chakra, I have, a, I have a feeling you want to use this for relationships, hence why you sent me the question. Uh, you'll be able to tap into your relationships. Your mom will be able to tap into her relationships a lot easier. Uh, you'll be able to uh, see problems before they crop up and be able to steer around them or deal with them ahead of time. Um, and you'll be able to know right away if somebody uh, is good for you whether it's a romantic relationship, a friendship, or maybe a coworker, a business partner, um, just by awakening your third eye and having that inner knowing, it cuts out a lot of problems later on down the line. <laughs> uh, I know because I've been there, and I, I assume you've been there too, which is why you're writing me. So I want to thank you for sending in your question, and I hope my tips are you find helpful. Now again, guys, if you want to send me a question, you can send it to amore, A-M-O-R-E, at agelessknowledge.com. These questions are free. I don't charge you for answering them. I don't send you an email to try to sell you something. Um, I do this for you. These are free. I can't stress that enough. So if you uh, you know want to ask a free question and get a free answer, please send it to me. Yes. Okay. Topic of the week. I want to talk about fear of intimacy because as a sex coach, which is part of what I do, uh, I see the fear of intimacy a lot. And intimacy anxiety is the fear of emotional closeness with another. It can also be the fear of being sexually intimate with a romantic partner. Uh, a person who is fearful of intimacy will be very reluctant to open up and to be genuine for fear they're going to be rejected if they show you their true self. They wish to avoid being hurt, which I think most of us do, but these guys take it to the extreme, and pain at all costs, at all costs. Um, there's two underlying fears contributing to intimacy and uh, intimacy, anxiety and fear. There we go. The fear of ultimately losing their partner or the fear of being controlled and, using one, and losing one's freedom. Now, when we're growing up, I want to throw this in here before I go on. When we're growing up, we learn how to relate to another person, to our surroundings, from our family members or our primary caregiver. We learn how to touch. We learn how to show affection for one another. We learn how to be close. We learn how to express ourselves in our younger years by who is around us. Uh, this has been proven up teen times by, by psychologists, so it's a proven fact that we learn from our environment and we learn from those closest to us. Now as we get older, we can make the conscious decision to change how we react to people. Um, eight times out of ten, people will not change. Uh, there is a fear of change, uh, along with the fear of intimacy, and people don't like change. People resist change, although uh, change and death are the two things we can never avoid. <laughs> uh, but people do their best to try to do that. Um, so if you find that you may be fearful of intimacy or being sexually close to somebody, take a look first of all at your childhood 
take a look and see how how it uh, went, how close your parents were, your uncles, your aunts, your brothers and sisters. Um, did you tell each other you loved one another? Did you give each other hugs? Uh, it, it it makes a huge impact on, on who you are as an adult, um, how your childhood was. But before I keep going on that, uh, what are some of the, the signs or symptoms that you have intimacy anxiety? Uh, you have a feeling that you're not worthy of love. You avoid close relationships because you're gonna you feel that you're gonna ultimately be rejected. You sabotage a relationship when your deep feelings develop. Um, this could mean creating a undue drama, instigating a fight. Uh, as soon as you see that your partner is emotionally growing close to you, you do everything in your power to push them away. Uh, you can also be very clingy and have sacrificial sacrificial behavior in a relationship in order to keep that other person in a relationship. You're reluctant to commit to a relationship. Makes sense. You attempt to get your needs met within a romantic relationship with little emotional investment as possible. You're constantly testing your partner to see if they'll leave you. You know, you, you, you flirt with somebody in front of your partner. You send um, text messages. Um, you start, you know, dressing provocatively and um, again, flirting in front of them. That, that's usually one of the big things. <laughs> if your partner flirts excessively in front of you or you do that in front of them, um, constantly choosing the wrong people to date or have a relationship. When you know something's gonna lead to nowhere yet you still go after that person, there you go. You do a lot of serial dating or casual sex. You frequently break up the, with romantic partners. Um, you create emotional distance with cool or aloof behaviors. And you know, there's problems in the bedroom. The fear of intimacy can relate in male impotency or erectile dysfunction. The fear of intimacy in women may also affect their ability to enjoy sexual relations or to reach an orgasm. You know, in, in order to enjoy being with your partner, uh, you can, there can't be fear. <laughs> there can't be fear involved. Uh, being naked and being intimate with your partner uh, is a very vulnerable experience. Uh, it is. And in order to enjoy that vulnerable experience and enjoy that closest that comes along with being vulnerable, you have to be able to let your guard down. And you can't let your guard down if you're fearful. Right? Makes sense? Okay. So I already talked about what, what happens to it. Um, how you get it with, with being involved you know, in your family, in your environment when you're young. It can also happen, of course, when you're older, if you're in a um, deep relationship, you know, a marriage perhaps, and it's a lengthy marriage, and it, it ends all of a sudden, usually because the other person ends it. Um, when you are that crushed, it, it's very difficult uh, to get over the fear of being crushed again. So you may sabotage uh, the relationships after your main relationship has ended. I know um, when a big relationship breaks up, main relationship like a marriage or living together or whatnot, if you've ever noticed, you or maybe people you know, tend to jump into um, the rebound relationships. Rebound relationships is all about the fear of intimacy, the fear of getting close, the fear of being rejected, stabbed in the back, or whatnot again. And people just cycle through other people. Most of them don't do it consciously. They don't say, hey, I think I'm going to just go mess with people for a while until I'm over my, my past love. It's an unconscious thing. You want to feel close to people, but you're terrified to be close to people, and you just cycle through. So it's always a good idea that if you have a horrific breakup, that wounds you to the core, that you take time off from dating. You take time off from trying to be intimate with one with another person and just be by yourself. There's nothing wrong with being by yourself. There's nothing wrong with being single. It's, it's the fear of, of being alone forever. It's what drives people, even though the fear of intimacy, to cycle through new partners. Nobody's an island. We're not meant to be an island. We're not meant to be disconnected from other people. So if you take a long time, several years after the breakup of your relationship, several years in the grand scheme of things isn't that long. It's okay. Just kind of like an FYI. Now, when you find that you have fear of intimacy, 
Um, you can do a couple of different things. You can um, see a counselor or therapist uh, and get to the root of why you have a fear of intimacy. You can also, in conjunction, see a coach, a sex and intimacy coach, coach like myself, um, to help you formulate a po positive plan to move forward. Um, and you can also, of course, if you're with somebody and you notice you're ser seriously cycling through people, you can make a commitment to uh, stop doing that and be single until you have um, overcome the fear of intimacy. You know, being with somebody else is a wonderful, wonderful experience. Um, even if it's not overly sexual, um, just being able to converse with somebody and be close to somebody, it frees up so many chakras in your body. It opens up so many portals of energy that uh, when you're in a relationship and you're feeling good about it and there's not fear at being intimate with the other person and at any level, things just work. Uh, look back on your own life and to see for yourself when things happen to work and what was going on in your life at that time. And I, I think I think you'll you'll be surprised that I'm right. <laughs> I had to push my plate here, excuse me for just a second. Um, poor Darren's trying trying to get something to eat and I am in his space right now. So he's kind of perplexed at why can't he get to his food. Nonetheless, there you go. Fear of intimacy. Now on to the next viewer's question. Again, you can send me a question to amore at agelessknowledge.com. And um, they write, hi, this is E from um, across the pond. I have a difficult life. I was with a man who happened to be my boss. Uh, in the past months, he was pursuing me, controlling me, manipulating me. Very jealous too, without reason. Um, it's an obsession from both sides in silence. According to my astrological research, we're both Venus Pluto people, karmic past life connection, and he's having sex with many people. Sometimes I believe maybe it's some kind of ill love, sometimes only sex wishes. Um, all of this is happening at a distance. He was already hurting, he's done harmful things, rumors, gossip. Uh, this has affected my family. Uh, my sister got cancer, I became revengeful. I tried to speak to him. Uh, he's scared to be in touch with me. I lost my job. I'm all alone. Uh, what's this all about? What do you see? E. Okay. Um, when you get involved, even at a distance with this guy, um, his energy is very negative, very um, low, very sub-level is what I would call it. And being involved with him on any level, um, ruined your energy. I didn't say ruined it. That's a strong word. It negatively, negatively affected your energy. And because it negatively, negatively affected your energy, uh, bad things started happening to you. When your energy is um, blah, when it has holes in it, when it's not shining vibrantly, you tend to attract uh, bad things. And you have um, negative thoughts, negative thoughts transfer to bad things, and it's just, it's a horrible cycle. So what can you do? Okay. First of all, you need, you guys have had past lives, at least four or five past lives together. He has always stabbed you in the back. They've been horrible relationships. Um, highly sexual, but no emotional commitment. Um, the fear of intimacy, like I was talking about just previously, what do you know? Uh, he has it. He carries it from lifetime to lifetime to lifetime. He never uh, works on it. Um, get away from him. He is no good. He will never be any good to you because he is no good to himself. And he's no good to himself because he doesn't work on his fear of intimacy. He doesn't work on his own energy and his own problems. And um, that just brings everyone down around him. Do you notice how the light's getting stronger over here? <laughs> wow! I was in the dark and... I'm the light. Goodness gracious. Um, but yeah, you, you, you need to get away from him. You need to start rebuilding your energy. Uh, you need to um, start you know, having better thoughts. You need to um, allow the white light from above to come down into your energy field and just cascade over you. And it sounds a lot easier than it is, but uh, all you have to do, you close your eyes and 
you imagine this white flowing energy above you and watch it cascade down like a waterfall. The white energy waterfalls down on you and through your body. And by doing that, when a, the cascade is water or energy is going over you, the white light is pushing the black light or the negativity down through you, through your feet, into the ground. So white, and you see the black fade away. White, black fade away. And the more white that comes in, the more black fades away into the ground. And you do this um, several times a day for months. Good idea. And your energy will be cleaned out of his energy. Uh, burning frankincense will also help you considerably get away, get rid of the energy in your environment and also um, up the frequency of your energy. Uh, carrying a quartz, carrying an amethyst will also be very helpful to you. Um, once you start doing this and once you start changing your thoughts and once you get away from him, I mean, things will improve uh, like 600%. You'll find a new job. You'll find a good love. Um, now, his, your sister, what, what, what happened with your sister getting cancer has actually nothing to do with him or you. That's, that's your sister's own path and um, her karma connections and her energy. So I hope you take my advice. There's wonderful things ahead for you. You just need to rid yourself of his energy and strengthen your own energy body and move forward. And now I have a cat trying to break in, so we're going to move on. <laughs> but thank you very much for sending in your question. And guys, remember, if you want to send in your question, send me an email to emore at agelessknowledge.com. Now, for the magical item of the week, I want to talk about caraway. C-A-R-A-W-A-Y. As in an oil, not the, um, not the herb. Caraway oil um, vibrates with the planet Mercury and the element of air. The, the powers it has, I suppose, the, the positive qualities is it helps strengthen your conscious mind, your physical energy, and helps to attract love to you. Now, the fragrance is very refreshing. I have some caraway. I love it. It's very refreshing to the conscious mind. Um, you want to give it a good smell, sniff it in to enhance alertness and to strengthen your memory. And if you want to smooth an ongoing relationship, um, smell it again and visualize the two of you working out all of your problems. I like putting it into a uh, essential oil diffuser. You know, so every like every hour it gives you know gives off the scent and then it cascades through the through the air. And it's just I love it. Anyways, caraway oil. I mean, it's good stuff. Um, go out and buy it. <laughs> now, my affirmation for this week is ready. Okay? My message is unique, vital, and important to the world. Again, my message is unique, vital, and important to the world. Now it doesn't matter who you are, or what you do for a living, or where you live. Everybody has a message for the world. Everybody. And no two messages are the same, because no two people are the same. We all have our own unique properties. So your message is vital to the world, no matter what it is. No matter if it's, um, you know, finding better love, having great sex, um, doing what you enjoy, being a nomad, um, loving yourself, loving children, taking care of animals, enjoying the, the cooking, um, you know, crafts. Everybody has a message and everybody's message is important so again say it with me the light is growing as I'm saying this my message is unique vital and important to the world okay so that several times a day every day until I do a new Amore with Ellie and then I'll give you a brand new affirmation now to see past episodes of this show please visit my website AllieThees.com or my youtube channel or agelessknowledge.com so there are plenty of places you can find past episodes of this show but I want to thank you guys for stopping by and watching Amore with Allie until next time keep laughing keep living and of course guys keep loving you take care of yourselves bye <laughs>